Our next honoree is just the, the most amazing um, builder. Whenever I, I, I think I hear that, um, do you know that O'Shaughnessy poem, we're the music makers, we're the dreamers of dreams, wandering by love. We build up the world's great cities. I think of Kevin Roach. He, uh, and I will introduce him as soon as I find my notes. Um, <laughs> he, he uh, there we are. Okay, he is one of, the, one of the finest modern architects of his generation. He has literally shaped the American landscape with his stunning innovative buildings, including the Ford Foundation in New York, the um, skyscrapers of the UN Plaza, California's Oakland Museum, the Conference Center on the banks of Dublin's Liffey, the massive Santa, Santa Den headquarters in Spain, and the soaring glass Shio Dome in Tokyo, city center, and he's worked on, on some of the most important renovations, most notably his ongoing work with the Metropolitan Museum of Art. He was awarded the uh, Pritzker Prize. Uh, is that how you say it? Pritzker? Pritzker? Um, the highest honor in his field. And Kevin was born in Dublin. He was raised in County Cork. His mother is from Tipperary. I just had to throw that in. He was, he was here earlier. He told me earlier when the, our wonderful Consul General, Noel Kilkenny, and his wife, Honora, presented him with the original, with a copy of, of what, Noel? Stand up and tell him what you presented them. A, a copy of the original flight they arrived on in 1948 when he was on his way to Chicago to join Van der Rohe. And then SS America in 1950, when he took up former residence, the actual embarkation papers. And finally, his uh, application for and grant of US citizenship. So, uh, thank you, Noah. Um, he also, Kevin, attended Rockwell College, which is in Tipperary, and uh, after that UCD, where he, and after that he apprenticed with Michael Scott, who was uh, Ireland's uh, leading architect at the time. Uh, in 1948, he decided to pursue a postgraduate degree at the Institute, the Illinois Institute of Technology, although Harvard and Yale also wanted him. Um, his studies there were cut short due to financial uh, troubles. Um, again, that old financial troubles. But he sought, um, he sought work, he moved to New York and sought work at the massive United Nations building. And just, this is, just incredible. He got, he got an office job as an office boy in, in, in the United Nations because he wanted to, to be in there. And of course, uh, they didn't have any openings for architect. Um, he hadn't planned on staying in America so long, but uh, the opportunity presented itself when he heard that the famous Errol Sarenair, is that right, Kevin? was uh, looking for apprentices and afterwards he became the uh, firm's senior design, design associate in 1954. He worked on such projects as the St. Louis Arch, uh, Washington DC's Jules International Airport and the CBS headquarters in New York. Uh, he started his own firm in 1966 and has been the visionary behind such building as the uh, Nations Bank Plaza, the tallest building in Atlanta the Museum of Jewish Heritage in downtown Manhattan and its moving uh, Holocaust Memorial, and New York University's Kimmel Center for, for University Life um, at NYU. And that's just a tiny little handful, but in this issue of the magazine, I hope you'll read Sheila Langan's wonderful interview with Kevin Roach, and we have, we've put in as many of his buildings, but not enough of his beautiful, wonderful buildings in this issue. Um, Kevin and his wife of 49 years, Jane Tuhi, with whom he has five children and 13 grandchildren, live in Connecticut in an old house surrounded by trees. So would you please welcome our inductee, honoree, Kevin Roach. Oh, dear me. I thought we'd never get to this point. Uh, I'm really, 
really quite overwhelmed and very grateful for this extraordinary honor and to be grouped with this very, very distinguished members of the community. In a way, I'm sort of an interloper because I didn't actually emigrate as such. I uh, decided, I don't quite know why, uh, to become an architect. And then after working in London and in uh, Dublin, I decided to study with the best architect in the world, who was Mies van der Rohe at Illinois Institute of Technologies. And I went to the embassy or the consulate in Dublin to get my student pass. And uh, when we were there, he said, you want a green card? And I didn't know what a green card was. And I said, no, I don't think I need one of those. <laughs> and he, he said, well, you might as well take one. He said, I got lots of them. <laughs> and so I took the green card and uh, flew to Chicago, which took two days in those in those days, and one thing led to another, and it turns out I really did need the green card. Uh, a moment just to thank my wife, Jane, who was a fabulous, fabulous, fabulous person who gave up her career to create a family of five children and 12 grandchildren, all of whom are not here tonight, but, but just one Eamon, our oldest boy. So thank you for that. Now, I grew up in a very, very small town in County Cork. And uh, nobody, I don't know why, when I was about 12, I decided I'd become an architect. But I don't know why. And nobody understood, because nobody had ever heard of an architect. And they'd say, so, well, why do you, so, so, why, why do you want to become an architect? And say, sure. Sure, now if you want to build something, there's Johnny over there, and he, he's a carpenter, and there's Paddy Mac down the road, and he's a mason, so he'd put a building together. What, 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 what would you do? Uh, you know, you'd just stand there waving your hands. <laughs> so here I am, some 70 or 80 years later, waving my hands still. <laughs> but in any case, I did pursue it. And it was mentioned that I went to Rockwell, and at nighttime in Rockwell, you could have two, one hour of study. I mean, after the study, you had one hour of your own time. So I decided one night to design a church. Well, of course, naturally, it was a church, because all we knew about was churches and all that stuff. And I had this brilliant idea to create the church in the planned shape of a cross. <laughs> And I was so excited. I mean, this, this extraordinary idea had hit me in the thing. And, I, and when I, I drew it up and I showed him, and he said, you bloody Egypt. And he said, don't you know every church is a shape of a cross? <laughs> so those are, but anyway. Uh, so that's the beginning of, uh, you know, <laughs> downhill. Uh, and then we, uh, there was one other thing. I wanted to say, but of course, naturally, now I've forgotten what it was. But um, just in the side, Morningdard mentioned the Jewish community, and I have to say that one of my proudest, proudest achievements was to work with that community to produce two Jewish museums in the city of New York. And you know, why would they go to a little boy who grew up in a small town in the south of Ireland? You know, those. There were really, you know, and I got into that uh, understanding the whole Jewish world, and it's quite extraordinary. And it brings me to the really the point of what I want to say about um, there was one other thing in my uh, school class. I designed a house. And in the center of the house, I put a spiral stairs, beautiful spiral stairs. And I'd never seen a spiral stairs like that. And the professor came along, and he looked at me, and he said, how would you get a coffin down that stairs? <laughs> <laughs> and it was kind of, in a way, an eye opener, because you know we think only in terms of being alive, but, but there is another period <laughs> which, which, come, which comes along. And why, and, and you can put it in this term, 
you know, while we're alive, what do we do that we can really pass on to the next generation? What do we do to create a great world, a great culture, and all of those things? And we should dedicate our lives more to that, and we should try to understand more. You know, I've been working for the Metropolitan Museum for 43 years, and I've become involved in, you know, Japanese, Chinese, Egyptian, Roman, all of these cultures, and you get into becoming involved, and you realize they were all people, they all had ideas, they all had great hopes. They all knew how to fight wars, too, which is another problem. But they had these great expectations. And what can we do with our lives to really pass something worthwhile along to the next generation and to the generation beyond that? And it's very important to think in those terms. And in that regard, of course, America is a great hope for all of the immigrants who came here, and it filled all of their expectations, and most of their expectations, and it's truly the greatest, let us make it the great hope for the rest of the world. And with that, I will cease and desist. Thank you very much.